All right, hey guys, welcome to Sanko Workshop. Today we're gonna to be talking about the big tire trend, bigger tire trend. We're seeing this more and more now and I love it. Straight up love it, but some things you need to know before you go doing it and what's happening with it on some of these vehicles you can get from the manufacturer, which is key. If you can get these as a package from the manufacturer, they're usually gonna come up with some hidden upgrades that you're not aware of and that's a big factor to it. So, uh, but we see this more and more. We see it now with the, uh, um, you know, the Raptor, the, or the Ford F-150 Raptor, when it came out with the 35 package, then it came out with the, now it's got the 37 package. Uh, you have uh, Jeeps now putting out the 35 package. Won't be long before Jeeps putting out 37 options. Matter of fact, their concept vehicles, uh, they're running them with 40s on them, as uh, I've just showed you in some of the other videos. Uh, a lot, pretty much every Jeep concept, Wrangler or Gladiator they're running now has got 40s on them from the factory so we're seeing this a lot bigger the zr uh the colorado uh bison edition the new 2024 colorado bison is coming with 35s on a mid-sized truck okay with ifs suspension very hard to do bronco's got the sasquatch package with the 35s now so we see this trend towards bigger tires it's not something new it's just we're taking it to much bigger levels now because we can. I remember back in the day where my dream truck when I was right out of high school, I graduated high school in 93 and I think it was like 2000 was a year or somewhere right near about 2000 when they came out with the, uh, uh, the first ZR2, the Colorado ZR2 and it had 31 by 10 by 15 tires on it at 235, 75, 15 I think it was. Then I dreamed of that truck. I was like, oh my God, it looks so big and aggressive. They were 31s, okay? So here we are 24 years later, and like I said, 40s are the new norm for a lot of things, 37s and 40s. So it's crazy how fast things change. Now, what? first off, before we figure out what you need to do to your vehicle, what has what, what is the benefits of these bigger tires? More ground clearance. I don't care if it's an IFS, and, uh, um, a uh, independent front suspension or if it is a solid front axle but the only way you're going to get more ground clearance for the most part is going to be with bigger tires okay it's the only way to really get it up there you could do a lift on an ifs gain a little bit more through there but you still got all of your uh control arms and everything down there lower where it's not going to really work as well for you so ground clearance is a byproduct of tire diameter not with tire diameter the bigger the tire gets for every two inches in tire diameter you go up you gain one inch of ground clearance so that's the beauty of it the contact patch and the traction this is one that's very important and a lot of people misunderstand this notice that all these vehicles i told you about that are bringing out all these new tires and all these bigger tires they are not ballooning them out super wide like you see the roller skate look that a lot of people go for it's not a bad look and it doesn't hurt anything and I'm not taking anything away from it, but it is not the width of a tire that matters. This, this, this width, okay, gains you nothing. It is the height that gains you everything, okay? This is non-event, okay? This is everything, okay? So this is what you want because when that happens and when you roll that out and you take that and you air it down, a big tire will air down like this and give this much bigger contact patch on the ground versus a round tire which only has a little contact patch and is designed to literally push everything right here into the front and kind of stockpiling it and jamming it up. So uh, it is the height of the tire that matters way more than the width. On the width, a rim, okay, here's a rim and then you got a tire on it that that rim will not let that tire get much wider doesn't have any benefit to it um, so it is the height that matters height gives you ground clearance height expands out the gr the contact patch and gives you more traction and ability to uh, grab onto rocks and objects and give you more contact on the ground for when you're going through the mud or any of those kind of obstacles the traction is all you have. Doesn't matter how much horsepower you have, doesn't matter how much anything you have, you only get so much of a patch that we're showing you. You only get so much of a patch making contact with the ground or the surface you're driving on. That patch is everything. That is all you have for traction. So if you can expand that patch out longer, you gain much more traction. So it's important for that. 
Also improves your angles. Okay, you're seeing here your approach angle, your departure angle, your breakover angles. You're seeing all that. All of those numbers improve because the tires lift the body and everything up higher. As that height goes up, that stuff improves tremendously for all those angles. So that's a beautiful thing. Now, lift will improve those angles even more, but the tires, as you go up in size, automatically lift everything up. Why, real quick, should I say on here, is it that a, a two-inch tire or a two-inch tire size increase is only going to yield you one inch of clearance? Well, remember, you have a tire here. In the middle, you have an axle right here, okay? When you go up two inches in tire size, it is basically all the way around a diameter, but only one inch is below it and one inch is above this center part. Since this is the only half that matters, it's on the ground, Okay, you only gain one inch. That other inch is up here where it's in the wheel well and not doing nothing. So a two inch upgrade in tire size yields one inch of tire of more ground clearance. Okay, so that that comes into play. So there, but there's a huge advantage to it. Huge advantage. The other one is protection from your sidewalls or with having a bigger tire. You're going to gain that protection uh, for your vehicle in a bunch of different ways. You're going to gain it in the sense that rocks and stumps and things like that aren't going to hit your wheels because they are protected by that massive sidewall. If you got a 20 inch tire or a 20 inch wheel with a uh, 32 inch tire, it looks something like that. Okay, there is zero sidewall to it. But if you take the same thing and you take a 16 inch tire with a 32 inch wheel, you get all this sidewall. That is protection, okay? That is the stuff that we are after. Not to mention, you get a lot more cushion and bounce and stuff in this, which is going to be less jarring on your suspension stuff, hitting all the time as you're rolling out there. Less damage and less stress to your suspension components because you have that softer cushion ability of those tires that are there. So win-win all the way around for bigger tires. That is the reason this trend is there. And they're sexy. They look good. There is no doubt about it. They look really good. That is the reason so many people put wide big tires and offset them way out. They, wheels and tire packages make a vehicle to a lot of people. Now those tires that are sticking out way offset and they're uh, super wide, they don't have any real benefit, but they do really look good to a lot of people. I don't care for that roller skate look. I don't want the stone chips flying, all that. I'd rather keep my wheels inset, but, uh, but they sure do. Wheels and tires, bigger tires, they, they just look good on everything, okay? Even my dad, who's 77 years old, just bought a new Cadillac, and he demanded that he had the 20-inch wheels because he's a wheel guy. He wanted the 20s, not the 18s. Everybody has their thing, and tire wheel packages always are a big factor for people. Now, what does your vehicle need in order to run bigger tires? Well, if you're buying them from the factory, they already take care of all this. What I mean by that, if you are buying a Jeep, uh, say you're buying a 2024 Jeep uh, Willis uh, Wrangler and you're going to get it with a 35 package. They've already changed the gearing. They've already updated everything. They've already done all the behind the scenes stuff needed to run those 35s on there. Okay, If you're going to put them on yourself, you're going to probably have to make some changes. Like the Willys comes with a 373 gear. Probably fine for 33s. If you're going to put 37s on it, you're going to wish you had uh, taller gearing in there. Something like 410s or 538s or something that is going to roll those big tires over and not bog that motor down so much. So um, gearing is a big one. Okay, gearing is a huge one. We see this especially in the Tacoma world, the you know, in the, in the Toyota world, but you have to re-gear them if you're going to start putting bigger tires on them because they just don't have the power to, to roll those very well. You try putting 35s on a Tacoma, you're going to have to re-gear it. Okay, even 33s on a third gen, a lot of guys are re-gearing. Okay, so uh, gearing, and gearing is not ridiculously hard. You're looking at about a thousand bucks in the front, thousand bucks in the back, depending on model. You know, maybe maybe double that if somebody's doing the labor for you at a good shop. But they're not ridiculously expensive. However, they void your warranty if you still have one. If you re-gear it, you void your warranty. Whereas if you get these from the factory, like if you were to buy the uh, Bison version of the ZR2. You get it from the factory, already done, it's already re-geared, everything's already set, you are good to go. But if you buy it yourself, uh, take a regular ZR2 and you try to build it up to that, or a Trail Boss, you change that gearing, you're going to you're gonna lose that warranty. So things to keep in mind and consider. Steering upgrades are another one. 
Okay, um, when you start getting into bigger tires, the aluminum knuckle aspect, uh, uh, the control arms, the, you know, the distance and clearance to all that kind of stuff, uh, it all starts to come into play. Heck, even on some vehicle wheel bearings, pitman arms, steering stabilizers, all sorts of things become uh, danger zones as far as for braking or quick wear. So steering parts need to be upgraded. You have much more rolling mass out there on the ends of those wheels and you have much more traction. Remember what we said about that little, if your vehicle is designed with traction packs of this big to be the, the what it could do, they only have to build the components of your suspension and your steering systems so strong because you can't get more traction in that. But then if you extend that traction to that big and make it three times bigger, now you have much more traction, means that there's much more stress on your components as you start using the power of the engine and the gearing against that traction, things can start to break. So that stuff all needs to be upgraded and maintained and, and updated. Uh, lifts or mods are usually required to fit bigger tires, whether it's just because of the, it, the wheel well liners uh, or the fenders. You might like Toyota's notorious body chops. They all had to be body chopped on the Forerunners, on the Tacomas, just to fit 33s on them. A lot of times they had to chop that, do a frame chop on there. Things that have to happen in order to get bigger tires, you got to take into consideration. And then also you will usually need wider rims. Rims by law have a set minimum and maximum on what you can do tire size on them. So for example on my Jeep, my Gladiator Rubicon, I have a 7.5 inch di or width wheel. Okay, 7.5 inches wide. That means I can only have up to a certain size tire. I can have my 35, sorry I'm writing sideways, 35, 11, 50s on there. But if I went to a 35, this is really weird, 12, 50, if I did that, I have to go to a minimum of an 8 inch, sorry, that's kind of weird, but an 8 inch rim. And I, I don't have, to, in order to go to an 8 inch rim, I have to buy all new wheels for my Jeep. I don't want to do that. I lose resale value if I take away the stock wheels. I lose a lot of advantages there, and it costs me a lot more money. So for me, it was a no-brainer to go this route. But if you if I wanted to go to a say I wanted to go to a 37 uh, 37 by uh, by 1150 even which they do make that if I wanted to go that route I still have to go to an eight or a 8.5 inch wheel which means I have to buy new ones so on my particular vehicle with 7.5 inch rims wide that is the biggest I can go. And many tire shops will not let you, like Discount Tire, um, when I went there too, they had to, uh, you know, I already bought the tires. I brought them with me to have them installed there. And the guy had to look it up. He didn't believe me that I could put them on my stock rims. I'm like, yes, I can. I have a 7.5 inch rim. These tires, per the specs, on Toil's thing, on there, they will fit on this rim. I can do it all day long. He had to look it up. He said, yep, okay, we can install it. Had it said I needed an 8 inch rim, they would not have installed those on there for me. If I would have brought, bought these and brought them up there, they would not have installed them for me. So things to keep in mind, things to keep about. This new trend of bigger tires is amazing. We love it. Everything about it, we love. If you can get them from the factory, it's going to be the best way to do it. Because you are going to gain all of this stuff already being done for you, proven, tested, geared right, everything set up right. If you cannot and you are going to do it yourself, understand some of the things that you need to get into it. But I am a big, big fan of this. I love this. Always have my entire life, ever since I was 17 years old. And like I said, and when that ZR2 came out with those 31-inch tires, oh, jaw hit the ground and it was hooked ever since. So there you go. Something to think about. Thanks for watching.